All right, so let me start this video with a warm-up problem. Consider the sine of Jureen and divide by the cosine of Jureen. What are you going to get? <laughs> that was hilarious. All right, so talking about tangent, what I want to do in this video is go through the steps of a typical tangent line problem. Okay, so consider the function f of x equals minus 5x squared plus 20x. What's the equation of the tangent line at the point 1, f of 1? Well, the first thing you may want to do is to sketch a graph of the function. This is a quadratic function. Its graph will be a parabola. And because the coefficient in front of x squared is negative, we know it will open downwards. And in fact, it's easy to check that at x equals to 0, f of 0 is 0, so it will go through the origin. And also at x equals to 4, f of 4 is also 0. So it's going to go through the point for 0. So my parabola will kind of look like this. OK, and the point I'm interested in is 1, f of 1. So I can calculate its x, its y coordinate just by substituting x equals to 1 in the function above. So I get minus 5 plus 20. So the y coordinate here is 15. So on my graph, the point would be somewhere like here. So I can sketch the tangent line. What I see right away is that the slope of the tangent line should be positive. So hopefully that's what we're going to get uh, with our calculation. OK, so I'm going to be quite pedestrian here in calculating the tangent line. So what I'll do is start by looking at a secant line. So this is the point x equals to 1. So I'm going to take another point here on my graph with coordinate 1 plus h. So what I'll first do is calculate. So if we call this point p, this, co this point here, this point up here I'm going to call Q, which has x coordinate 1 plus h and y coordinate f of 1 plus h. So I'm first going to uh, calculate the slope of the secant line, and then I'll calculate the slope of the tangent line as the limit where I send this point Q to P. And finally, I'm going to use the point slope formula to calculate the equation of the tangent line. All right, so what is the slope of the secant line? Well, this is just the difference in y-coordinate over the difference in x-coordinate. So this is f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over 1 plus h minus 1. So that's just h. All right, now I can replace the function f by its actual value. So I can substitute first x equals 1 plus h. I'm going to get minus 5 times 1 plus h squared plus 20 times 1 plus h minus the function at x equals to 1 which gives me minus 5 plus 20, the whole thing divided by h. Now I can do some simplifications. First, I can expand the square here. I'm going to get 1 plus 2h plus h squared. I could distribute the 20. And minus 5 plus 20 gives me 15, so I get minus 15. All things still over h. Now I can distribute the minus 5. Get minus 5 minus 10h minus 5h squared plus 20 plus 20h minus 15, whole thing over h. And now there's going to be some simplifications. Minus 5 plus 20 minus 15 goes to 0. So what do I get? I get a minus 5h squared minus 10h plus 20h gives me 10h divided by h. And now I'm assuming that my point here is not the same as 1. So h is not equal to 0. Right? So I can actually factor out, or in other words, I can divide both downstairs and upstairs by h. We'll get rid of this, this, and this. And I'll end up with the result that the slope of the secant line is equal to minus 5h plus 10. All right, so that's good. That's for the secant line. What I'm interested in, of course, is the tangent line. So how can I get the slope of the tangent line? Well, we know that the slope of the tangent line, so this is just schematically, is going to be equal to the limit where I send the point Q to P of the slope of the secant line. Right? So I want to take this point that I call 1 plus h and send it here to 1. So this is just in quote, but the actual formula will be the limit. So how do I send the point Q to P? I do that by sending h to 0. So the actual formula will be the limit as h goes to 0 of the slope of the secant line, which I just calculated here, 
it was minus 5h plus 10. Right, and then I need to calculate this limit. So we haven't seen how to evaluate limits yet. We will do it in the next few weeks. But here this is pretty simple. So what does the limit mean? The limit means that I'm looking at h that is not actually equal to 0, but it is extremely close to 0. So one way to evaluate limit or to estimate limits is to take h that are smaller and smaller, so closer and closer to 0. Now here it's pretty easy to see what happens. So the second term is just 10, so it doesn't depend on h. The first term is minus 5 times h. So as, as h gets smaller and smaller, this term will also get smaller and smaller. And as h approaches 0, this term will also approach 0, right? So in the limit where h becomes extremely close to 0, this term becomes extremely close to 0 as well, and the limit just becomes 10, which is the second term. All right, so now this is kind of, you can take that for granted. We don't really have a precise definition of limits yet, but we will see that this is correct. This is indeed true. The limit here is equal to 10. So that gives me the slope of the tangent line, and good news, it's positive, just as we expected. All right, so let me now finish the problem. So I want to calculate the equation of the tangent line. So I'm going to use the point-slope formula because I know the point on the tangent line and its slope, so that's a good way to do it. So what is this? This is the equation that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. x1 and y1 are the coordinates of the point on the line, and m is the slope. So if I substitute here, y1 is 15, so I guess I get y minus 15. Slope I just calculated to be 10 times x minus x1, which is 1. So I get this. Distributing the 10 here, I get 10x minus 10. And finally, I can rewrite that by bringing the 15 on the other side. I get y is equal to 10x minus 10 plus 15, which gives me plus 5. And this is the final equation of the tangent line of my function at the point 1, 50. In fact, this calculation also makes sense physically. If you think of the function as a position function, so as a function of time, it describes pretty well the motion of the ball if I throw it upwards with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Well, to be precise, the minus 5 coefficient should be minus 4.9, but it's easier to calculate with minus 5. So. All right, so uh, what I, I see from the graph of the function is that, well, I throw the ball at zero second, I catch it at four seconds, and it reaches its maximal height at two seconds. And what I've calculated is that the slope of the tangent line at one second is equal to 10. So this is exactly the same as saying that the velocity of my ball after one second is exactly 10 meters per second, right? Because remember, velocity is the same as derivative of position function, which is the same as the slope of the tangent line. Now let's see if it makes sense. So I throw the ball initially at 20 meters per second. After one second, it's still going upwards because it hasn't reached its maximal height, but it should be going slower because there's a gravitational acceleration that's decelerating the ball. So 10 meters per second is less than 20 meters per second. So that makes sense. And our calculation is actually consistent with what you expect from physics. So that's good.